we spoke what three four weeks ago about Bill Cosby about what he did to you and I don't think at that time you ever foresaw what would happen today no I knew that there was an appeal pending to, uh, before the Supreme Court of uh, Pennsylvania uh, and there were several issues. Uh, how many people can you bring to a trial to attest to similar crimes, which would leave the ju- lead the jury to understand that this person was the one who committed the crime, for example. Uh, and yet, on the other hand, character evidence is not allowed. He's a bad guy, and therefore he committed this crime. That wouldn't be allowed. That's prejudicial. We don't even get to that issue, or even the other issue, because the court decided that way back in the day in 2006, I think it was, uh, Bill Cosby and the district attorney of Pennsylvania, uh, that is to say Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, Bruce Castor, they made a deal that Bill Cosby would not be prosecuted. And, uh, but it was never written down and it was never signed off on by a judge. The reason that that's important is because this court decided that that deal should have been honored by the subsequent district attorney, Kevin Steele. And Kevin Steele's the one who charged Cosby and brought him to trial twice. And since he should never, according to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, have been charged at all because of the deal and that the deal should have been honored by the subsequent district attorney, they never even discussed the rest of the issues. They said he never should have gone to trial. He was promised a freedom from prosecution in order that Andrea Constant could ask uh, could ask him questions that Cosby was would then not be allowed to take the fifth amendment to so Bruce Castor thought perhaps he was doing Andrea Constant a favor by eliminating the possibility of the fifth amendment uh, you know defense and and they settled the case uh, Constant and Cosby settled their case But then Kevin Steele, the subsequent DA, charged him and took him to trial twice. And according to the Supremes of Pennsylvania, he should never have been charged. So now I want to make it clear, and it's very important. This is a very important point. He was not acquitted. He was not found innocent. There was no finding of fact at all. It was a procedural issue that he should never have been brought to trial to begin with. And the rest of it was not addressed at all. So as one of the dozens of women who say that Cosby raped them, sexually assaulted them, what is your reaction? You know, uh, I'm pre- more pragmatic uh, about it, I'm sure, than some of the others are. I've been a lawyer a long time. And the fact that he, according to the uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court, that the fact that he should never have been tried at all is really significant because heaven allowed, if you like, him to do three years in jail and have two trials. And the trial itself is an ordeal that a lot of people don't survive. Uh, excuse my phone. You're fine. But... Um, the very fact that he should not have done been tried at all, according to the, the Supreme Court, and the fact that he, did, in his 80s, did three years in prison. If that's all that heaven will allow, to quote Guns and Roses, <laughs> then, then I'm good with that. You know, the man is in his 80s. Uh, three years in prison at age 80 is a percentage of your lifetime that could be as much as 50%. And nobody has a good time, so... I'm good with it. If that's all we get, I'm good. I know that a lot of women are not. I I have not uh, researched enough, and, and, and possibly you know. So what you're saying, he cannot be charged again for these crimes in Pennsylvania. That's, that's what the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania has said. Now, I think that this 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 present district attorney kevin Steele, will find a way to bring it to the united states supreme court for the issue of whether or not a deal can be struck between a district attorney and a defendant just because the district attorney feels like it or says there wasn't enough evidence to convict him and clearly there was because he was convicted ultimately so that that horse doesn't run what is it that dog don't hunt how what whatever the vernacular is that doesn't seem to hold water um, yeah, he did three years in jail that, uh, according to him and his, his people who will speak for him now, he never should have done, but you know. Okay. So you're an attorney. You're also right. a, a rape survivor. Why, right. why would a deal like this be made 
so far before charges were eventually filed. Why would this deal ever be made, period, I should say? Well, like I say, the deal was made because the district attorney did not, was, was not going to prosecute Bill Cosby. There are reasons for that, but his stated reason for not charging Bill Cosby was that there wasn't enough evidence to convict him. Now, we know he was convicted subsequently, so, hmm. But the reason that he also gave was that this person, Andrea Constant, who was not going to get her day in court in a criminal trial, was going to be able to proceed against Cosby in a civil court. And if he has made a deal not to be prosecuted, and the district attorney agrees to that, then in the civil case, Cosby would not be allowed to take the Fifth Amendment, and he would have to be he would have to answer all the questions that were put to him. If he were in jeopardy of his freedom or his life by answering those questions and incriminating himself, he could stand behind the Fifth Amendment, and she wouldn't have gotten anywhere in her civil suit. So, on the one hand, the district attorney thought he was doing her a favor, and on the other hand, everybody thought he cut his social connected friend a, a fat deal. Mm. But without the Fifth Amendment, he answered all those questions and they were able to settle the civil case. Sure. Okay. All right. So um, f remind people who may not have seen our first interview or heard your story, how, how you met Cosby and what happened with that work relationship. I guess you could say work relationship. Well, just briefly, he and his partner, who was also the guy that prescribed him, who was a doctor who apparently prescribed him all those fun drugs he was taking with girls he meant to have sex with, as to quote him, um, I just didn't feel well that day and tried to call my boss, uh, Dr. Amar, to say, I can't, I can't work today, I don't feel well. And Cosby took the call, invited me to lunch at his restaurant where he was sitting around with some friends saying, if you eat, maybe you'll feel better. And I thought, great, that'll be fine. And I went there and he said, uh, gee, do you think maybe contact or, you know, Benadryl, whatever it was, you know, would that help? And I thought, I don't know, maybe. So he gave me two capsules to swallow right there in front of God and everybody, in front of his friends in a packed restaurant at lunchtime during the day. Beloved icon, you know, this this great man gives me these pills. And this was in and Ho Hollywood in the early 70s. In Hollywood, in, in, in 70. And I took them, you know, so shoot me. Because <laughs> a lot of people said, well, why would a grown-up person take pills from a stranger? He's not a stranger. He's Dr. Huxtable. He's in his element with his friends, with a packed place in the middle of the day at lunchtime. What could happen, right? Well, as I began to fall apart, I heard him say, well, she must be sicker than we thought which was why I was there to begin with, because I wasn't well enough to work. And he took me home, and by the time he got me home, the drugs kicked in, and I was helpless against him. And that's when he raped you. Yes, and then he left $200 on the coffee table, which made me crazy when I woke up at 3 in the morning after having gone to lunch at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That's how long I was unconscious. Oh, my word. Yeah. And, and the part I remember of our, from our previous interview is that you then saw him and you went up to him and said, well, t tell, tell me what and happened. And I said, I'm not going to make a fuss about this. Well, I had, my brother was in the uh, children's hospital in Los Angeles and subsequently died that year. But Bill had gone to the ch terminal ward of the children's hospital and, and glad-handed, gave my brother a radio, you know, all that stuff. And so I just couldn't say anything bad about him you know I mean it was my mother was over the moon my brother was heroic you know in front of the other kids and stuff and I just I just uh, so anyway I met him later and I said I'm not going to make a fuss about this but I'm going to tell everyone I ever meet for the rest of my natural life what you did and that's what I've done right that's how we met <laughs> yeah that's how we met um but year decades went by and so when you would see him on television or in movies or whatever I didn't I didn't see him on television or in movies. I went back to Europe after that. I had grown up in Europe, and I graduated from school in Germany, and I had come back to the States, gone to the University of Texas. Yay, Texas. And, uh, you know, so I just went back to Europe. And then in my world, I just didn't come across his TV show or him or any any memory of him at all. And then why did you decide to go public? Was it in 2005? 
Yes, I heard the, I heard this headline I think on CNN that said Bill Cosby accused of sexually assaulting, sex, drugging and sexually assaulting a woman in Pennsylvania. And my first thought was, really, at his age, he's still doing that stuff. And then I heard over the period of about a week or ten days or so, and it, I already could tell from the press releases from the district attorney's office that they weren't going to charge him. So I started calling, going, "I know very well he did that. I know very well he did that." You know. And then I went on the air to say, "If there's only me and her, that's still too too many." And as it turned out, sixty-two women came forward altogether. Over time, sixty-two women showed up and gave their names and stood up with us. But I came out for Andrea Constant. I came out to say, no, I know he's a bad, bad guy. I know she's telling the truth. And that's, you know, I just lost my temper and, and, and started calling everybody in the world to say, no, no, she's right. She's, she's absolutely right. So for people that look at this story today and, and, and there's a lot of people that say, well, that proves that money, money, you know, takes over the law. Money talks. Money talks. It takes precedent over the law. Um, the victims never really win. What, what are, what's your thoughts about that? Well, from a, from a law point of view, I mean, I love the law. And I think that the law is really more important than Bill Cosby. And if the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania says that the district attorney's deal should have been binding, then he would never have ever come to trial at all. But somehow, the forces and fate and Mother Nature herself saw to it that he was that he spent fifteen years to defend himself. He went through two criminal trials, which are horrible ordeals, and did three years in jail when he shouldn't have been tried at all. Is like I think we should take it as a gift, as a sign, and and I'm and I'm good with it. I'm fatalistic to that degree. I'm okay with that. I know he didn't have a good time from the first day until the last time, and he's not out of the woods yet. There's going to be, I predict it shall go before the Supremes of the United States mm. if they take it. Yeah, which which they will, I'm sure, because it is a real. It's a it's a it's a case that's important enough. It's an issue that's important enough. Which is, can district attorneys make deals the way they do? They have just absolute power to decide who goes to jail and who doesn't, and who's tried and who's not, and and can they blackmail people to say, well, I'll let you go if you testify against this guy. I mean, it's a loaded issue, and I I'm hoping the Supremes take it. I'm hoping they do. But if they don't, and this is all we get then we got more than we would would have otherwise gotten, and I'm good with it. Do you think that today's decision changes anybody's mind out there from thinking, oh, see, he was not guilty? Because you make an important point. He was not acquitted. He was not acquitted. I mean, O.J. was acquitted of what? He was acquitted of the charges that were brought against him, first-degree murder, lying in wait. Well, he was a steroid-shooting cokehead. He couldn't have laid in wait if he had wanted to. If they had charged him with second-degree crime of passion, he'd have gone to jail. Casey Anthony in Florida was acquitted of first-degree murder, special circumstance, killing of a child. How did the baby die? Nobody knows. If you don't know, you can't make that conviction. They should have charged her with gross negligence resulting in the death of a child. She would be in jail today. The Rodney King case, when the cops were acquitted, what were they acquitted of? They were acquitted of, get this, attempted murder. Well, everybody in their right mind knows that there's no such thing as attempted murder by a cop. If he wants to kill you, he will. So if, if they had been charged with battery, gross negligence, mayhem, you know, assault, abuse of power, blah, 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 they'd all be in jail right now. And this case is different than that because... It was it turned this whole case turned on whether or not Bill Cosby and Bruce Castor made a deal that was binding upon the subsequent district attorney, Kevin Steele. I say not. They say yes. I say it goes to the Supremes and let's see what happens next. How long have you practiced law tomorrow? Oh, 30. I'd have to kill you. If I told you <laughs> over 30, so do you over 30, do you, over 30 years and I love it. And, and I just love jury trial. I love the law. I, I, I just am so thrilled by it. And 
this ruling today is just another wow finish of an amazing of an amazing case but I, like i say i don't think the case is over but i think it's very important to point out that he was not acquitted he was not found innocent the court did not address any of the crimes or the charges or the victims or anything they simply said that a deal that was made between this defendant and that district attorney should have been honored that's all they said and with that they Pushed, they let him go from jail because he wouldn't have been in jail because he never should have been charged according to them. So there, it's very, very tricky. And it's a thing that I think that the Supreme Court should actually address federally. Okay, anything you want to add? He was not acquitted, people. He is not innocent, but he is not in jail. And if that's all we get, I urge us all to thank our lucky stars and count our blessings he's a man who's 83 years old he's been three years in prison he did not have a good time let us learn to live with it and accept what's come what's come very good do you know does this stay on his record oh yeah it does and he wants it on his record because it says that he shouldn't have been tried so he will carry his record around with him like this and say see this is my record I see. <laughs> Okay. I was charged and I did time, but I was shouldn't that have been charged. He cannot say I didn't do it, but he cannot say I was not supposed to have been charged. Mm. That uh, much he can say. Do you, did you have a, a specialty focus tomorrow for a law? Def defense. You were a defense attorney. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. But civil mostly civil law. Civil law. Because I did one murder trial and it it can kill you somebody's whole life is in your hands and it's it's very very difficult but um i still i love the law the jury juries do what juries do and it's magic you know somebody said to me earlier well do you forgive him and i said yeah, that's way above my pay grade <laughs> that's not my job yeah. my job is to accept what happens and to be grateful for the time that he did and the suffering that he had because that's what he did to us because he made us suffer over a long period of time and I don't feel that we've been let down. I feel that we got an extra bonus somewhere because if things had turned the way this court would like them to have done, he never would have done any time at all. So sure. what can you say? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I am grateful. 